Hello, my dear stu students. Um, uh, today we're going to read another expository text. Now its title is Changing Views of Earth. Let's read this, uh, the essential question together. How can scientific knowledge change over time? Now, uh, this reading selection is basically a comparison between the uh, you know, capabilities of science today uh, in exploring uh, the sun, the stars, the planets uh, compared to, you know, old times. Fine. Now, the, 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 the new inventions, for example, by uh, Galileo um, uh, found out that the earth is round but old you know uh, thoughts and old schools of uh, thoughts believed that it was flat so we are going to have uh, such sorts of comparison uh, you know uh, when it comes to earth and uh, the pl planets and the stars uh, including the sun we are going to begin with analyzing and talking about the reading strategies that we are going to have in this reading selection. This is the first reading uh, strategy, ask and answer questions. Now, if you, did, if you do this, uh, you are going to understand all the details, the facts, uh, the events that a reading selection is talking about. When you feel uncomfortable, or when you feel that you do not understand what's going on, ask yourself questions and find answers to them. In this way, you guarantee a full understanding of the reading selection that you are reading. The second reading strategy or comprehension skill is cause and effect. This is very important because it is very, very common and very commonly used in informational texts and expository texts. Like, uh, I give you a very simple example. Because it's raining cats and dogs outside, I decided to stay home. Now, we have a cause and effect relationship in this example. The cause is, it's raining outside, the result or the effect is, I decided to st I decided to stay home. Let's read uh, what is uh, you know under uh, cause and effect. Science and history authors want you to know not just what happens but why it happens. They show that one event is the cause of another event called the effect. Cause and effect relationships often form a chain with the effect of one event becoming the cause of another event. So, while we are reading this passage today, I want you to notice how cause and effect is used. Regarding the genre, which is the literary type, I mean, are you reading, uh, you know, fiction, non-fiction, realistic fiction, informational text, expository text etc this is what i mean by saying genre uh, fine today we are reading another expository text it gives facts and information it uh, supports us uh, like opinions with reasons and evidence it include uh, subheadings photos graphs diagrams to explain ideas and we come to a vocabulary strategy, which is Greek roots. You must know, uh, son, that English took lots of words from uh, Greek, from Latin, and from French, and from, you know, many other languages, including Arabic. Fine. So, uh, today we are going to study some Greek roots. Fine. Now... The benefit of knowing the roots is that whenever you come across a word that is unfamiliar, uh, 
by knowing the meaning of the root you are going to be able to figure out the meaning of the word let's read many english words contain greek roots for example the greek root meter means measure so any english word containing meter like thermometer barometer kilometer usually has to do with measuring something okay my dear students the reason why i began my video with the reading strategies is that because it's very 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 important to analyze and understand the reading selection and when you become big and you have when you have to sit for uh, international exams like TOEFL like IELTS uh, like when you master such skills reading the reading section is going to be easier for you because you know, knowing the skills will enable you to analyze and understand uh, any reading selection in the best way out there. So, let's begin reading the passage. On the ground, looking around. This is a very interesting uh, title. You know, in the past, people studied the stars and the planets while they were on Earth. They were unable to go up because no rockets no like airplanes were invented yet no matter where on earth you go people like to talk about the weather and this is very very true when it comes to british people you know they're all the time asking about the weather this weekend's forecast may provide the main criteria for planning outdoor activities fine if the word criteria is a little bit unfamiliar to you, I'm going to give you an example in using it. Now, when it comes to teacher Walid, there are many criteria for students' success. First, they have to participate. Second, they have to pay attention. And third, they have to do their homework on time. So, criteria. Let's be, continue reading. Where does all that information about the weather come from? The ability to predict storms and droughts required scientific, or sorry, required centuries of scientific innovation. Innovation, things that are new, inventions. We had to look up at the skies to learn more about life here on Earth. Long ago, humans based their knowledge on what they experienced with their eyes and ears. If people could heighten their senses, they might not feel so mystified, which means confused, by the events confronting them daily. For example, something as simple as the rising sun perplexed people for centuries. Again, perplexed is the same as confused. They believed that the earth stayed in place while the sun moved around it. This was called the geocentric model. So geocentric means earth stayed in its place and the stars, including the sun and, uh, you know, the other planets revolved around it or moved around it. Of course, this is absolutely untrue, right? But people thought that this was the case because they didn't have, you know, uh, technological advancements and instruments to figure out the truth. In the early 1600s, an Italian named Galileo pointed a new tool called the telescope toward the night sky. So here, a discovery of a new tool, which is the telescope. As a result of his heightened vision, Remember cause and effect. As a result of his heightened vision, he could see stars, planets, and other celestial spheres, which means, you know, celestial, related to the sun, the planets, uh, and, uh, you know, all the stars, and other celestial spheres with new clarity. Each observation and calculation led him to support a radical new model of the solar system 
the meaning of radical here uh, is a very different new model of the solar system. In the heliocentric version proposed by the scientist Copernicus, the sun did not orbit uh, did not orbit the earth, the earth orbited the sun. So here are some glimpses of truth when uh, Copernicus adopted the heliocentric uh, you know theory which means you know uh, the sun was the center of the solar system. It was stationary which means not moving while other planets uh, were moving around it. Here you can see a photo of Galileo with his telescope. He was looking at the sky and uh, he was uh, getting his theories. In the sky looking down. Now the case is different. People can uh, you know, go up and look down at Earth. New technology allowed scientists to evaluate theories better than uh, ever uh, measuring device, uh, sorry, evaluate theories better than ever. Measuring devices such as the thermometer and the barometer offered new insights, new good ideas, insights into other patterns. However, people were still limited to ground-based learning. What if they could travel into the sky where the weather actually happened? In the mid-1700s, some scientists sent measurement devices higher and higher. At first, they used kites. Before long, hot air balloons offered new ways to transport the tools and sometimes scientists themselves into the sky. So they began with balloons and with kites, but these things uh, had their problems. However, Scientists were not satisfied studying the lower layers of Earth's atmosphere. The more they learned, the higher uh, they wanted to go. They also wanted to obtain. They wanted to get information more quickly and accurately. Kites and balloons were hard to control. So this is, you know, the problem with kites and balloons. As a result, they occasionally veered off course. Veered off course or got lost, taking their data with them. The development of aircraft in the early 1900s promised safer ways to observe Earth's surface and the atmosphere above it. So now things are easier with the invention of airplanes. Kites and balloons could reach altitudes, which means heights, of approximately 3 kilometers. By comparison, Airplanes lifted scientists to a height of 5 kilometers and more. Radio technology allowed scientists to transmit data from the air to the ground where other scientists analyzed and compared information. Breakthroughs, which means very advanced inventions, came fast and furiously. Still, scientists dreamed of reaching ever higher.